Hello and welcome to a GP50 guide to troubleshooting your pressure transmitter. This troubleshooting procedure will assume a basic understanding of how to hook up a 4 to 20 milliamp current loop or VDC output device with a power supply and multimeter. If you are not familiar with these procedures, please check out our YouTube videos on how to hook up a 4 to 20 milliamp or 0 to 5 VDC transmitter here. Typically, a functioning 4 to 20 milliamp pressure transmitter will read 4 milliamps or within a designated tolerance specified on the data sheet for that product. Fixed range devices that don't have any zero or span adjustment have a tolerance on the zero reading. This is known as zero balance. Some transmitters are plus or minus 0.2% or plus or minus 0.5%, while others can be plus or minus 1% of the FSO. So for a 20 milliamp device with a 0.5% zero balance, the zero could read plus or minus 0.08 milliamps. The unit is typically functioning if the reading is between the range of 3.92 to 4.08 milliamps. On 0 to 5 VDC output units, the same tolerance on the zero applies. Depending on the range and with no pressure applied, a zero reading with plus or minus 0.5% tolerance should read between minus 0.025 and plus 0.025 VDC. Because these units read zero VDC, it is difficult to determine whether a unit is functioning properly with a zero VDC output. It could read zero VDC and still not function properly. If the unit is not reading as indicated above, or its operation is in question in your system, it is always best to remove the unit from your system and test with a separate power supply and multimeter to determine whether the transmitter is at fault. This will rule out your system's power supply and or reading device. With the device powered and connected to a multimeter or other reading device, here are some steps to troubleshoot the unit. Step 1. Ensure you have the proper VDC applied to the unit. Most units will operate from 9 to 36 VDC, but some special options or features may change this. Step 2. Ensure the multimeter or reading device is set to read milliamp or VDC in accordance with the unit type. Step 3. In order to do a simple function check, some sort of pressure source is required. It does not need to be the max pressure of the device, but at least enough to get a response from the unit. Typically, 10% of the pressure range is enough to determine if the unit is responding and functioning. Step 4. With the unit hooked up to the power supply and multimeter, and the zero reading within the limits mentioned earlier, apply a small amount of pressure to the device. Note, it is not advisable to mechanically apply pressure into the sensing diaphragm. Depending on the sensor type and range, mechanical force applied to the sensor could damage the sensing diaphragm. Step 5. With even a small percent of the pressure range applied, the unit should respond to pressure by elevating the output. This will indicate that the unit is at least responding to pressure and the electronics are active. If the unit responds, the next step is to apply the full-scale pressure for which the unit is rated and check the full-scale reading. For example, if the device is a 0 to 100 PSI unit with 4 to 20 milliamp, applying 100 PSI should produce a 20 milliamp reading or within the full-scale reading tolerance, similar to the zero reading tolerance. Step 6. If the unit responds to pressure, this usually indicates the unit is functioning. It is very rare to have a good zero reading and the unit responding to pressure but not working properly. If the unit continually reads a high zero or low, typically 3.2 milliamps or less, or 23 milliamps or higher, it's a good indication the electronics have failed or the sensor is damaged and the unit would need to be sent back to the factory. If the zero reads between 4 milliamps and 20 milliamps, but out of the tolerance specification, that typically indicates a sensor issue and the unit would need to be sent back to the factory. If the unit reads properly outside the installed system it was run in, it may indicate something other than the transmitter is at fault. In rare cases, a grounding issue could cause the unit to read good out of the system but bad when installed in the system. It is best to perform a ground test if this occurs. If a unit has become grounded internally, either through internal contamination or a damaged wire, it can cause the system to read improperly or completely fail. A simple check is to do a continuity test between the power wires in case ground and then the signal wires in the case ground. On 4 to 20 milliamp units, 
With the multimeter set to read ohms slash continuity, attach one of your leads to the red wire or whichever pin is positive power slash signal and the other to the case of the transmitter. If there is any ohm reading, this is an indication of a short somewhere in the system. If not, do the same between the black wire and the case of the unit. Any reading indicates a short and the unit needs to be repaired by the factory. On a 0 to 5 VDC unit, attach a meter lead to one of the power or signal leads and the other to the unit's case and check for any ground slash reading. Perform this with each wire then to case ground individually. There should be no ohm reading between any wire in the case. If there is a drain and or ground wire provided, it may be tied to the case so reading will show which is normal. These are some basic troubleshooting techniques that will determine whether it is the transmitter or something in the system at fault. Determining this avoids unnecessary cost and time in returning devices that operate properly. When in doubt, it's always best to contact the factory and speak with one of our qualified inside technical salespeople. We can provide guidance on testing your instrument to avoid unnecessary returns. To contact GP50, email us at sales at gp50.com or call us at 716-773-9300. If you like this video and would like to see more how-to videos or learn about GP50's array of pressure transmitters, like and subscribe to our YouTube page.